Hi there, I'm Dr. Ryan Hess with the University of Buffalo Neurosurgery, here presenting our case report on drainage irrigation fibrolytic therapy, aka DRIPT, for adult intraventricular hemorrhage using the Iroflow self-irrigating catheter. Hopefully this case is educational and demonstrates the benefits that Iroflow has over standard EVD drainage. Intraventricular hemorrhage has a fairly high expected mortality rate, reported to be between 50 and 80 percent. The incidence of this pathology is also quite high as well, reported in some series to be as high as 45 percent of intracranial hemorrhages. Treatment of intraventricular hemorrhage is typically done through the use of an external ventricular drain, though this is not without its complications. In a series by Fargan et al., they reported that up to 19% of the EVDs recorded at least one replacement, and up to 45% of them developed at least one occlusion requiring irrigation to relieve the clot burden. For this case, the patient was a 72-year-old female with past medical history of myocardial infarction, hypertension, and type 2 diabetes. She was found unresponsive at home, and on arrival to the emergency room here at Buffalo General, was known to have a GCS of 9. An emergency T was performed demonstrating diffuse casted ventricles due to intraventricular hemorrhage, and a not demonstrated CTA demonstrated a A23 junction aneurysm measuring approximately 3.3 by 2.2 millimeters in size. Given the patient's casted ventricles, we opted to place an ear flow. Given in our experience, casted ventricles of this nature typically require several EVDs to drain. After placement of the ear flow, the patient was taken to our angiography suites for coil embolization of her A23 junction aneurysm, which is noted on the lateral view of the angiogram by the red arrow. Following her embolization, the patient was monitored closely in our intensive care unit. On day two of treatment, she developed elevated intracranial pressure, requiring a second EVD due to concerns of loculated hydrocephalus. Unfortunately, at that time, the EVD that was placed was a standard EVD due to supply limitations with ear flow. This did actually provide an interesting comparison between the ear flow and standard EVD. The day after it was placed, the standard EVD actually clouded off and stopped functioning. Thankfully, the patient's ICPs had normalized at that point. On day six, we noted that the ear flow ventricle obviously had significantly better drainage than the non flow ventricle. So at that time, we decided that an ear flow would be placed in the left side as well, and we would administer TPA through the right side of the ear flow catheter. As you can see on the image on the right, we had fantastic clearance of the ventricular blood after the conclusion of the treatment. On this slide, you can see the typical setup of an ear flow system. It's actually quite easy and simple. It comes with a, an attachment for the IV bag, irrigation tubing, as well as two drainage tubes that attach to a cassette. The cassette is then attached to the ear flow monitoring system with a bed that can be dropped. As noted in the middle of the slide here, the ear flow catheter is a dual lumen catheter with irrigating and draining components. This catheter system is fairly easy to use and understand, and after a few placements at our institution, we have begun to develop our own internal protocols in order to optimize treatment for each patient. The benefit of using an Iroflow is its unique ability to drain and irrigate simultaneously. Iroflow's intelligent digital pump and dual lumen catheter enable active fluid exchange, which combines gravity-driven fluid drainage and controlled catheter irrigation. The system's controlled irrigation dilutes collected material and enhances its removal. As hinted at in the previous slides, you can see the progression and the comparison of the ear flow catheter to the standard EVD. So the initial pretreatment image is all the way on the left. The second image, going from left to right, demonstrates already some quite substantial clearance via the ear flow catheter, but almost no drainage or clearance of the blood by the standard EVD catheter. The third image is going to be just following the placement of the second ear flow catheter on the left and obviously on the right is going to be our post-treatment image, a substantial improvement from the initial. 
Unfortunately, the patient did require a shunt at the end of this, given how cast in her ventricles were. Um, and you can see the final image on the right is post-shunt placement. The clinical decision to use the Eraflow system in this patient actually stems from our current understanding of why patients develop post-hemorrhagic hydrocephalus. So the current thought is that it's a combination of direct occlusion of CSF flow by small blood clots, as well as scarring of the ependema that can occur due to inflammation from blood breakdown products. Interestingly enough, the DRIFT trial that came out of the UK several years ago describes a process of treatment where aggressive ventricular irrigation through a standard EVD and fibrinolysis with TPA was used in neonates with germinal matrix hemorrhage with intraventricular extension. The 10-year follow-up data actually came out quite recently and demonstrated superior cognitive outcomes compared to standard lumbar puncture and shunting used in these patients. The DRIFT trial provides evidence that the inflammatory cascade that occurs after IVH may actually lead to neurologic morbidity and continuous irrigation of the CSF may improve outcome due to clearing of pro-inflammatory substances. So not only may this reduce the need for shunting, it might actually improve patient outcome. So the DRIFT trial actually pro provides the basis of IVH treatment that we use in this patient drainage, irrigation, and fibrinolysis. This patient case provided a unique opportunity to understand how to use the aeroflow and interventricular hemorrhage as well as compare it to standard EVD drainage. As one can see based upon the imaging and the case presentation, the aeroflow did not become clotted off as did the standard EVD in this case, and it demonstrated superior ventricular clearance of the blood. Additionally, the aeroflow was safe and effective and easy to place. Theoretically, ear flow with TPA could be used in the standard protocol using the drift trials and in theory should reduce the need for shunt, shunt dependence as well as improve neurologic outcomes. Obviously this is a single case report and more data as well as standardized protocols are needed, but this does give hope that the ear flow can be used in such a fashion and improve the outcomes of patients in this otherwise morbid condition.